It's been a little bit over a year since Bugsnax came to PC and PlayStation consoles, and developer Young Horses is celebrating by finally bringing the delicious experience over to Nintendo Switch and Xbox platforms. With a handful of new features including a new island filled with new puzzles and Bugsnax, replaying or experiencing this journey for the first time has never been so scrumptious. Bugsnax has you take on the role of a journalist that gets invited by the explorer Elizabeth Megafig to the secluded island of Snacktooth. Snacktooth, as its name suggests, is home of the Bugsnax this mysterious race of creatures that are half bug and, well, half snack. Not a lot is known about them outside of Elizabeth's research, and that's why you're here to interview her and learn more. Sadly, just as you arrive, Elizabeth goes missing and her village of friends all disperse as things go amok without her. Upon arriving at Snacktooth Island, you find Philbo. The grump is left in charge while Elizabeth is away. As the new face on the island, you quickly assume the role of the investigator and problem solver as you and Philbo work together to bring all the grumpuses back together and find out what just happened to Elizabeth. Along the way, you'll uncover plenty of secrets and mysteries of the island, and discover the wondrous anomalies in the world of Bug Snacks. Bug Snacks is a fun and entertaining mystery adventure filled with plenty of laughs as much as there are surprises. Its cast of characters are a diverse bunch with interesting personalities and backgrounds, way more than a childlike design style would lead you to believe. I enjoyed my time on Snacktooth Island, exploring what it had to offer, and of course finding and capturing all the Bug Snacks that I can lay my hands on. In many ways, it harkens back to my days of playing Pokemon Snap on my Nintendo 64, and it was a delight every step of the way. Bug Snacks is a first-person adventure game taking place in the fictional world of Snacktooth Island. It's here that you'll discover over a hundred different types of Bug Snacks across the handful of biomes the island has to offer. Each Bug Snack takes on the form of a food and animal that mimics the attributes of both the food and the creature. A jam butterfly? Well, those fly in the air and are weak against peanut butter. A loaded potato spider? Well, they just love cheese. The puns go on and on. It's a humorous and clever way to go about designing these creatures, and every time I came across a new one, I was fascinated by the discovery. In uniquely clever ways, these creatures introduce puzzles into the gameplay in the form of trying to capture them. Some of these bug snacks will be a simple lure them into the trap and capture them. Others will require some more critical thinking. For example, the bombsicle creature will freeze you the instant it touches you, so you can't really trap it that easily. Likewise, the Cinesnail can climb to high and far away locations, making it more challenging to capture. Using your environment along your assortment of tools always proved to be a challenging but entertaining puzzle on its own. Speaking of tools, there's quite a few of them too. These are unlocked progressively throughout the 7-10 hour campaign with each being vital towards your bug snack captures. There is your basic remote activated trap that can capture nearby small bug snacks. For the more rambunctious ones, you can use your captured strawberry in conjunction with the assortment of different sauces to lure them towards specific locations. As you capture more and more bug snacks, you'll come across the missing grumpuses who will also need your help should they return to the village. This all plays into the main campaign, but also adds its own set of side quests for you to do. And of course, these grumpuses are going to want to eat some snacks. Feeding the grumpuses changes their limbs to the snack you feed them, letting you essentially customize them to your heart's desire. All in all, the added content adds plenty of replay value for anyone seeking more than just completing the story. The original release of this game took about 7-10 to 10 hours, but with the new updated version, new features and DLC content extends at length well above the 10 hour mark. One of the biggest new features is the Hut Customizer. It lets you complete simple challenges around the island that in return unlocks furniture and other knickknacks for your home. It's an added layer of personalization that's a great story touch considering how long you've lived on the island but never really had the option to decorate your home like the others could. One of my biggest complaints in the original release was the lack of a fast travel system, and with a game like this that featured heavy backtracking, it got a bit tedious. Luckily, this new version lets you quickly fast travel from the map view, cutting your commute time down to seconds. It certainly helps making some of the more repetitive missions less annoying. The big major change with this new DLC is the addition of a whole new island with the big quirk being, well, bigger bug snacks. Dubbed big snacks, these larger than life creatures are new species and modifications of creatures you've come across. Because of their sizes, you'll need new tools and spices to catch them. Large creatures, for example, have to be shrunken down before being able to be caught, and like you have beforehand, you'll need to mix and match tools with food items to attract new forms of bugs. All the added content easily added about 3 hours of gameplay, having something new for both new and old players alike. Bugsnax is a vibrant and colorful game that despite launching as a PS5 title, doesn't really feel all that technically impressive. Nevertheless, the art style is charming with characters that look like funny modified Muppets. The design of Snartooth Island is beautiful with environments that look equally as cute as much as it did mysterious. These backdrops heighten my curiosity both in the mechanics of the bug snacks, but also the exploration of their homes. I often found myself sneaking around the grass and bushes, peeking through every nook and cranny to make sure I didn't miss any lingering bug snacks. 
That speaks volumes to this world's design. It's certainly not a demanding game either, which is most likely why it finally made its way over to Nintendo Switch. Playing on Switch, I was able to run it at a solid 720p in handheld mode and 900p in dock mode. The framerate targets a 30fps mark that is mostly solid. Most of the framerate dips appear when you open the journal menu or when you sprint across varying terrains, but it was never really enough to dub this as unplayable. One big takeaway though is that the Nintendo Switch loading times are noticeably worse than the Xbox Series X and the PS5 version. Of course, I'm going to talk about arguably one of the catchiest and best songs in video games, it's Bug Snacks. Performed by the ever so talented Kero Kero Bonito, this song won the hearts of many people including my own. Even now as I'm writing this review, it's been like a parasite in my head for the longest time. After that popular track though, the rest of the music in Bug Snacks is instrumental and though not as catchy, it's still pretty good. These tracks follow the theme of exploration and curiosity, playing perfectly to exploring the island and researching all the Bug Snacks in sight. Bug Snacks was an absolute delight to replay now with the added portability on Switch and the wider audience on Xbox Game Pass. The conjunction of puzzles with charming creature hunting was a delight, and generally just a feel-good type of game. The presentation, though not mind-blowing, was adorable along with this music that's still stuck in my head, and it's all wrapped in a story that piqued my curiosity more than I ever expected it to. If you've never played Bug Snacks before, I beg you to give it a shot, and if you already beat it on PS4 or PS5, it's well worth revisiting for the added content and quality of life improvements. 